Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Debo and the Dunks. How's everybody doing? Fall is quickly underway here, finally. Uh, <laughs> uh, obviously, we've had one of the warmer Septembers on history. I thought I read that it was the fourth warmest 30 days or so of September's history, um, as far as recording goes back to, like, whatever. 1884 or whatever the heck it is. Um, Weather Service reported that. That's pretty interesting. Nice warm. And then October, I think, has been pretty close. I saw that we were nearing record highs. Now it's been sporadically 70. It's been great. We've all enjoyed it. Um, hope you're caught up on your leaves and all the fun stuff that fall brings because I'm sure the nasty white stuff's right around the corner, right? Uh, today we're going to talk high school football. This will be a quick one. Um, you know, uh, I know a lot of you out there are probably not real big fans, but those that are, it's fun. It's a great time of year. High school football playoffs have begun this week. Uh, Tuesday was the beginning of, you know, the nine men and A and 2A and 3A, and I want to say 4A. Uh, and 5A and 6A are today and tomorrow. Um, and then more tomorrow of the, uh, <clears throat> I think they're going to be in the semifinals already of those. A, nine man, double A, two A. So if you're not familiar, high school football in Minnesota has nine men, which is the, what we can only call it the lowest level, but it's the smallest schools. Um, then there's single A, double A, triple A, four A, five A, and six A. Six A would be the largest schools, and it goes according to your enrollment for the most part. Um, we'll mostly be talking six A, because that's what I've been involved with my whole life. Um, and then a little bit of five A, but not too much. If you're not familiar, playoffs have started Friday evening, which is the beginning of the uh, playoffs. There's 32 teams that get seeded, essentially, from four different sections, excuse me, in uh, 6A. Uh, it's a little different because it's only 32 teams in 6A. What I mean by that is that's the 32 biggest enrollment teams in the state, um, with a couple of exceptions, sometimes uh Schools like St. Thomas, um, they've never done it, but they could. Um, schools like um, Coon Rapids, um, Andover has yet to do it. Uh, Totino Grace, they'll move up and down a little bit. If Totino Grace wants to, they'll go up to 6A, and they were 6A for many years, and they've dropped back down to 5A because they can because of their enrollment. Uh, Creighton, another team that used to be a powerhouse and a 6A team, uh, has also dropped back down to 5A. And well, the reason they do that is for competitiveness and whatnot, um, which is somewhat interesting because a team like Creighton, for instance, is, you know, the highest levels. And when I say the highest levels, I mean the largest enrollment levels, like uh, whatever it is in basketball. I think it's 4A is the biggest, um, 2A in hockey. Um, Creighton, St. Thomas, teams like that are generally the highest level. But in football, as you may know, it's a little bit of a numbers game, so it can be hard to be competitive for a long period of time. Um, so we can forgive them for going up and down depending on their competitiveness or what their coaches or athletic directors choose to put them in, uh, in which level, if it's the highest level or a level a little bit low as far as the competitiveness goes. Um, on the 32-team slate, which is Friday night on the 6A level, um, you know there are a lot of pretty damn good teams. I'd say there's only about eight to ten teams that I think can win the state title in 6A. Um, but I do believe there's really one that has separated itself throughout the season, and that's Maple Grove. Um, the Crimson are 8-0. They're the only undefeated team in 6A. Um, they have pretty much trounced most of their competition this year. They haven't had, I guess what you'd call, really competitive games. Um, they, for the most part, cruise through their entire schedule with the exception of, well, I want to say one game, and that was against Centennial, the defending champs. Um, they had a little, it, it wasn't as close as it looked. It was 21-7 late, and then uh, Centennial scored to make it 21-14. Um, but that is their closest game of the season. Everything else pretty much has been a two-score or, <laughs> dare I say, six to ten score type games, you know. And they have rolled through the competition. Uh, their closest games were Minnetonka and Centennial. Um, but they kind of controlled Min Minnetonka also at Minnetonka. Um, and Minnetonka, a lot of people would say, is the second best team. Um, but that kind of varies depending on matchups. Because, you know, coaching and matchups are really, really big in, in, in football, as most of you know. It, it is a, a huge 
indicator of a program at the high school and college levels um, because, you know, they have a system. And once the kids buy into the system, it gets to the point where they become a powerhouse because year in and year out, they know the system, you know, from ninth through 12th grade, and they know what's going on. And the coaches, if you have a good staff, they, they're going to have a huge advantage because of many different indicators and many different reasons. Um, like I said, I kind of indicated there that Minnetonka would probably be um, the, the next big team. I think that Lakeville North, I think that Lakeville South to us, I mean, they've kind of had a rough season, but they've been in competitive games against the top teams, so you can't just dismiss them because they've been, again, a powerhouse for quite a while. I, I do believe that Moundsview is a dangerous team. I think Moundsview is probably my dark horse um, I don't know that they can win a state title, but they sure seem to be taking it to really good teams at times this year. And I wouldn't necessarily say they've had any fallbacks. They're six and two this season in their eight game schedule. And they started the season at Farmington, who's, you know, muddling around five hundred and below. I think they ended up three and five. And they lost that game right away at Farmington. And in high school football, as a lot of you know that played, you might not be ready your first game. It's usually before school starts. There's a lot going on with the kids. Um, your practice schedule is odd. You're not just generally doing it right after school, if you will. Some of your practices uh, in August, because they're not in school, can be at 7 a.m. and then noon or 10 a.m. and then 3 p.m. Or if it's really, really hot, you know, they may be doing night practices. So the schedule, I think, can be a big factor in if the preparation is right for your team to be prepared. I'm not saying that's why Monsu lost. I'm just saying those are the types of things that happen early in a high school football season. But since then, you know, they have really big wins. Um, they, they pounded a really good Force Lake team. Um, that was just a drubbing. Um, they have beaten up teams like Eastridge and St. Michael Albertville by many, 37 nothing over St. Michael. St. Michael's a decent team. They're a, they're a 500 team. They've had very good competitive games. Um, but that, that that's alerting to me. And their other losses to Stillwater. Stillwater's really up and down. I believe they have a sophomore quarterback. And I think whenever you have a sophomore quarterback, you're going to have, you know, your occasional up and down type games um, where you're, he's going to be good. And then, you know, his age shows a little bit. And then he has a rough outing. Um, so I would say that is my sleep house team, Monsu, or sleeper team, I should say. Is Monzu. I think that they're very dangerous. Um, teams that I think that are under 500 and still very dangerous to win a game or two. Uh, to get to state in, in 8A, you only need to win two games. Now, the two games are very difficult. Um, you're generally, your first game, if you're, unless you're a one seed, it's, it's probably a competitive game or maybe a two seed. Um, but the three through six games, so three versus six and four versus five, are usually very competitive games. Um, and some of those teams, you know, are fighting injuries, and that's why they're four and four. But maybe they're healthy for the playoffs. And if you were to put it together, that's probably more like a seven and one type team. And teams that have done that and, and are kind of going to Eden Prairie. You know, Eden Prairie had a really bumpy season. Um, you know, we all know they've been a powerhouse for about twenty years since Mike Grant got there. They ended up five and three, and they have really good wins over Buffalo. Uh, Prior Lake, you know, those are drubbings, you know, 40 to 6, 40 to 13 type games. But then they got whooped by Edina, 35 14. You know, last year they finished, Edina was the state runner up and still very good team with their quarterback and running back who are college players are on that Edina team this year. So they're very dangerous. They got walloped by a very good Shakopee team, 28 to 7. They lost to a mediocre it record wise, YZ a team, who again I think is very dangerous. And we'll get into them in a second. Lost that game, a hurt record, 27 21. But then lately, the last couple of games, they had beaten a really decent Rochester Mayo team by a ton, 46 to 7. And their big win of the year was they'd beat number two Minnetonka, 21 20. So not abnormal for a team that is led with the coaching staff like Eden Prairie has. Um, I think Eden Prairie is going to be very dangerous. Um, I wouldn't call him a sleeper because it's Eden Prairie. <laughs> doesn't seem fair, you know. They've been a powerhouse in high school football. for They have like eight titles if you're not um, aware. Um, they're in the Final Four just about every other year or every year when they're really cruising. And this is their one of their more down times. The last three years, they have not been that 8-0 team that they're accustomed to or 7-1. They've actually, you know, been muddling around 5-3, and 6-2. and two. 
but they play the toughest schedule in the state. And before, when they would rock through it and win very comfortably, now they're in very competitive games, and if something goes wrong and it's an evenly matched game, you know, even Prairie's more suspect to lose. Um, but again, another dangerous team. Um, again, back to the favorites. I think the favorites are pretty clear. They are Lakeville North, Minnetonka. Um, to a certain degree, I think I would never throw away um, Centennial and Force Lake because they've had very tough schedules and played the highest competition on their schedule really decently. Um, what I mean by that is Centennial almost beat Maple Grove. They, they scared the bejesus out of them. It was a very tight game throughout. Um, and that's surprising because Centennial has had a real tough season. You know, they've lost some games they shouldn't lose. Uh, they got shot out by Anoka 14 nothing. But, you know, again, high school football. That's how it can go. You know, upsets happen, if you want to call them upsets, because of matchups and coaching. Um, your quarterback's injured. You know, a big star player's injured. You know, they don't really report that. It's not like there's this media following like a college or professional football league where, you know, you know when a star's hurt. You don't know that until a Maybe a buddy tells you or a friend of a friend. I have a lot of contacts or friends in the business because I coached for 30 years and in the, at the high school levels. And so you make contacts and they'll maybe let you know, you know, in a conversation, oh, by the way, yeah, the reason, you know, that happened is because their starting quarterback was out, you know, sick or, you know, had COVID or something. You just never know what's going on or an injury, of course. Um but again, back to those teams. I think teams that are very dangerous. Shakopee also is a powerhouse. Shakopee can win the state title. Um, they'll be there for sure. Um, teams that I think are going to cruise Friday night um, would be, I would say Minnetonka is going to cruise. Maple Grove is going to cruise. Lakeville North It's going to have a weird game against Hopkins. Hopkins scores a ton of points. That game could be something like 50 to 30. Um, that that'll, that would actually be fun to watch if you're there live. Um, uh, the Lakeville South has got a tough game against Wyzetta. Who knows who wins that game? I think that's very even. I think that goes down to the wire. But I do believe Anoka is going to be playing Roseville. Unfortunately, that's going to be a drubbing. Uh, Force League probably handles Buffalo pretty well. Force League very underrated. If you don't know about them, they're 6-2. and two. They have been 7-1, and 6-2 and two the last three years. They're right there. They keep winning their first playoff game, but then the second one they've had some heartbreakers. Um, we should that'll, they'll, that'll be fun to watch. They have one of the best defensive players in the entire state. They might have the best player in the entire state um, at defensive end. Um, and he is going to the Gophers. He went to a camp last summer as a sophomore, so going into his junior season, he's a junior this year. And at the camp, uh, at the at the actual facility down there at the U of M, um, uh, just a few hours into the camp, they offered him a scholarship just after seeing him uh, live um, and, and getting to talk to him and whatnot. It didn't take long to realize this kid is, you know, a six foot three and a half inch, two hundred and sixty pound monster. Um, when I coached in the Forest Lake system, I'd heard about this kid as far back as three years ago because I had coached his older brother. Um, and his older brother had kind of told me, hey, wait till you see what, what's coming here. This my, my little brother, is, he's already benching 250 pounds in the eighth grade and and easily. You know, he's not muscling it up. It's, it's two, three reps. And you don't hear about that very often in high school sports, even at the highest levels in Minnesota. Maybe that happens in Florida and Ohio and Michigan and Texas. But... Uh, I don't hear that very often around here. Um, he, he, he's going to be something to watch. Cannot wait to watch him play for the Gophers. Uh, generally speaking, I think so. They're a dangerous team. I think Prior Lake is kind of dangerous. They have a win over Force Lake, first game of the year. It's a close one. It's a one-point win. Um, but I think that Prior Lake is very dangerous. They have a good team. I don't know that they can win state, but I think they can win a couple games, and that means something. Um, I think upset specials. I mean, I saw upsets because one team is clearly favored. Again, Shakopee's going to roll, by the way. Edina's going to roll. I think Eden Prairie's going to roll. Those are going to be pretty easy wins, in my opinion. The close ones that are that are really going to be tight because of the obviousness, I think that Rosemount is 1-7, and seven, but that is really deceptive. They have had an insanely tough schedule. They've played nothing but above 500 and, undefe- I should say, top four, five, six, seven teams in the entire state. 
Um, their schedule has been brutal, and they play Blaine. Um, I believe Blaine's a three seed, and Rosemount is a six seed. But that's, you know, the reason just showing you the respect that Shakopee is getting a six seed with one win because everybody knows that that team is playing a schedule that is brutal. They played Lakeville North, they played Egan, they played Farmington, Lakeville, South Shakopee, um, and Centennial, and you know, that, that's just brutal. That's a very tough schedule. They could be an upset special over Blaine. They could give them a shot. That's going to be a high-scoring, fun game to watch. Um, I think Blaine pulls that out, but it, it could be an upset special there. Um, another one that I think the Champlain Park Eastridge game, that could go either way. That's going to be down to the wire, in my opinion. Eastridge has really been playing well the last three weeks. Um, but so Champlain Park is very dangerous to play, a very t- difficult schedule like all most of these teams. Um, and they have wins over Centennial. They have good, solid wins. Um, that game should come down to the wire. I had the Wise at Lakeville South. I already talked about that. Anyone can win that game. That should come down to the wire. Um, I think that Centennial is going to struggle with Rochester Mayo a little bit. Centennial's offense has been really stagnant the last three to four games. So if they win, I do see it being very, it won't be very blowouty. Maybe 28 to 7, but I think it might be closer than that. Um, I think Mounds, too, unfortunately, is going to blow out Coon Rapids. The Farmington Prior Lake game should be a good game. That should be a nice tight game. And if Farmington get the higher, did get the higher seed, so they get home field, and that might help them a little bit. But Prior Lake is very dangerous. That's going to be a tough one. Um, I think St. Michael Albertville can beat Stillwater because we don't know which Stillwater team is going to show up. The one that lost to Forest Lake at home. Or the one, excuse me, they'd actually played at Forest Lake, I apologize. And the one, you know, that is, you know, getting drubbed, you know, by pretty solid teams. But their schedule has been, I think Stillwater's one of those teams that they have, they're 4-4. Four and four, And they got, a, they got a decent home game seed, you know, when they have their easy wins um, over Woodbury and teams like that. But then, you know, they lost by a touchdown to Forest Lake. They were stunned at home by White Bear Lake, who's like a seven seed, you know, so that's weird. But then they play great at Edina in a one-score game that comes down to the wire. They drubbed a decent Park of Cottage Grove team um, by, you know, three, four touchdowns. And they drubbed a good Eastridge team, you know, by three touchdowns. So we don't know which team's going to show up. And then they lost their first game of the year to North, who's very good, um, by a few touchdowns. My point is we don't know which team's going to show up. And St. Michael Elberville is also dangerous because they play a tough schedule. One week, they'll beat you. And the next week, you know, a different team shows up. And that's kind of how high school football can be. Um, the egan Osseo game, that's another upset special. osseo has been playing much better lately. They kind of started the season, um, you know, is looking like they have a shot at going 0-8. You know, it wasn't going good. They got dropped by teams like Maple Grove, but then they settled in, beat Coon Rapids, got blasted by Champlain Park, blasted by Blaine, blasted by Centennial, and then stunned St. Michael Albertville uh, at St. Michael Albertville by a point late, um, then get drubbed by Anoka, and then have a war against White Bear Lake and a, and a late touchdown where White Bear Lake wins the game. But my point is osseo has been playing much better lately. I think that they're going to stay in that game. I think they're going to give Egan a headache, and Egan is good. Um, Egan, you know, I, I would say their schedule, they're five and three. And Egan has been a good team the last three to four years. You know, started out with a loss at Edina, drubbed Rochester Mayo, beat a solid Rosemont team. Now Rosemont's not having a great year. I told you they're one and seven. We talked about that, but they're still good. They're well coached. Beat Lakeville South, who's very dangerous. Lost by a three-point game against Lakeville North at Lakeville North. So you see where I'm going with this. Beat Farmington, lost seven to nothing at Forest Lake, and got two touchdowns called back, and nobody knows why they were called back to this day. Of, um, one was, I think, a, an accidental whistle by one of the referees on a, like a 24-yard touchdown run. So, you know, good for Forest Lake because they won the game because of that, but at the same time, I think Egan might have been the better team that day. They just, you know, didn't get a they had a couple of fluky breaks. Um so my point is Egan is a very good football team. And I think if they lose to Osseo, it would be an upset. Um I think moving on down the road, I think really it's a Minnetonka, uh Maple Grove, 
Lakeville North, Lakeville South, Forest Lake, Moundsview, and obviously I'm not going to ever throw away Shakopee, Shakopee, Eden Prairie, and Edina. Those are your teams that can win state. Those are your best teams. Those are the teams that are you know, really, really strong. I mean, they got to play each other, but those teams got a shot at getting to the Final Four and then getting into the Dome, we call it the U.S. Bank Stadium, playing two games there indoors. And then we'll see who ends up uh, playing for the state title. If I have a prediction, I would be kind of surprised if Minnetonka and Maple Grove aren't right there. Um, again, Lakeville North, very, very good team. Haven't talked much about them. I don't know much about them. Haven't watched any of their games. But just by checking their schedule, they've you know they've been nothing but solid all season long with a 7-1 and one season. Um, again, back to the sleeper teams because it's the most fun to talk about. Obviously, I'm going with Lakeville South. Why is it that they play each other Friday night? Um, I don't think Centennial's a throwaway. I, I just feel like they're so well coached and they're very young. They lost so many seniors off their state championship team last year, but they have an environment at Centennial. They have a belief. Um, they have a system in place with many very good coaches and they just really know what they're doing. And I really believe that they can be knocking on a door to that final four if if because their matchups are brutal and at the same time you know i'm not a hundred percent sure about the team this year i have not got to watch a centennial game i normally go to see a couple the last couple of years maybe more last year i saw about four um but my point is you know they're a very good team i do believe they have a shot i think champlain park can stun some people um they're talented and young uh, that only gets you so far, though. Um, Anoka, kind of a sleeper, and I haven't spoke about Anoka much at all. They have a couple of really good quality wins. They're a high seed. Um, they got a two seed, which is probably the highest seed they've had in 20, 30 years. I might be speaking a little out of my keister there, but I've been following high school football for 30 years, and I can't remember a moment where they were like 5-3 and three or 6-2 and two in a long, long time. Maybe there was one season in there somewhere in the last 15 to 20, but you see where I'm going with that. That has got to be pretty exciting for them to have a chance to go somewhere this year as far as, um, you know, where they're going to get, how far they're going to get. That'll be exciting. I think that you really got to worry about Moundsview. I'm telling you that is my sleeper team. I told you that earlier. The Mustangs are good. Um, they've had some pretty bumpy years the last five to six years. They were a powerhouse, if you're not knowing, um, for about 15 to 20 years. You know, they had a... Uh, they had uh, Grady was their coach, I believe, and he was there for many years. And when he retired, you know, there's a transition. And during that transition, you know, they probably lost a few coaches to retirement and other programs. And that's what happens in, in most high school sports. And when that happened, they, you know, had a few two and six, one and seven type seasons there for a while, um, you know, pre COVID and since COVID. But last year, they got. They had a couple of big upsets. They got into the mix, and then this year they are a powerhouse. They are a threat. I do believe they can win state. Um, I don't think they will, but I believe they can. I only watched them one time, and I was very impressed. Um, and that's about it. That's kind of what I got. If you're uh, going to get out there into high school football and watch some of these games, I urge you to get out there. It is so much fun to you know enjoy that type of atmosphere. It's just warm enough, you know, to you know, get out there on the Friday night. It's a little cool this Friday. You know, it'll probably be in the 40s. So you probably want to dress warm. <laughs> but uh, I don't see it being too bad. Just make sure you bring a nice cap, um, maybe a blanket if, you know, that's kind of your thing so you don't freeze to death and some nice uh, hot cocoa, all that good stuff. That's the best part about high school football, right? You get to do that stuff. I'll, I'll touch real quick on 5A if you're a fan. Um, I don't follow 5A as closely, but I do. And what I mean by that is I'm, I'm aware of it. I just don't go to any of the games. I don't have the time. Um, it's a little bit more, you know, can you get there or not? Your powerhouses are really simple. Um, they are Owatonna. Owatonna is undefeated. They are going to be competing for a state championship. A little stunner here is a little team called Two Rivers. I know absolutely nothing about them, but they're undefeated, and they got a one seed, and that'll be fun to watch. I hope they can go far. Um, they'll have to beat St. Thomas Academy to get there. Um, St. Thomas is not their most powerful team. They're always a threat to win the state title in 5A. Um, that should be a matchup. They got to get out of that section. I think Chanhassen and 
Mankato West and Mankato East, as always, will be battling to get out of two 5A. Uh, one 5A, I don't think there's anybody that can beat Owatonna. They're going to get the state. Um, 4A, four, when I say 4, I meant section 4, 5A, which is the next lowest enrollment level from 6A that we talked about the last 20 minutes. Um, I think it's going to come down to Creighton and Tartan. One of those teams is probably going to get the state there. I think that Robbinsdale Armstrong is going to get the state out of Section 5, but Cooper is a very good team. It'll probably come down to those two teams. Um, Monticello can win the state. Um, I think they'll get the state out of Section 6. I think Section 7 comes down, as almost every year, to Elk River and Andover. Uh, one of those teams should be getting on to state. And the team to beat, the heavy, heavy favorite in, in, in uh, 5A is uh, Moorhead. They have drubbed everyone all year. Um, again, you know, they're not playing a 6A schedule, but they are a very good football team. And I have not watched them. I've just watched their scores, and they have put 50 up on almost everyone. They had one close one against Alexandria a couple weeks ago, so I don't know much about Alexandria, but obviously Alexandria is going to be a tough team to beat. Um, but other than that, every single game is a 4-5 to five touchdown win. Um, they have had absolutely no competition. And I wouldn't say it's because of their schedule, um, but their schedule, not, it's not, you know, it's not, to, they have to play teams like Bemidji and Alexandria and Rogers, and they drubbed Rogers 41 7. Rogers was competing for a state title last year. I'm guessing they lost a lot of seniors because this year they're, I think, 2 and 6. They've had a little bit of a down year. And that'll happen when you lose a lot of seniors. But they're going to have to beat Alexander to get out of that section. If they do, I think they win state. I really do. Um, again, Elk River and Andover have a shot at the winning this state title. Uh, I think Monticello does. And I think this Two Rivers team I know nothing about probably does because they're undefeated and they got a one seed. Um, I think Chan Hassan can win state for sure. And I think Mankato West can win state. And I, I would say my runner-up. Uh, two Moorhead is Owatonna. I think Owatonna can, can win state. I think those two are the favorites, Owatonna, Moorhead, with that outside shot there of Alexandria upsetting Moorhead. That should be a fun game. Uh, it'd be fun to go up to the Moorhead area and watch that section final game here in a couple weeks. Um, that's I don't know much about, I, it's not that I don't know much about 4A and 3A. I just don't follow it enough. I'd be a waste of my, I'd be wasting your time. I don't know anything about the teams, the programs, the coaches. Uh, who's the powerhouses and whatnot. Traditionally, in high school football, programs stay strong when their head coach stays there. You probably already know that. It's quite common for a team like Eden Prairie, for instance, to be very good for many years because their head coach has the same coaches. They have a system. It's almost easy after five, six, seven, eight years. I'm going to give you a perfect example. I was at Forest Lake for many years, and when the new coaching staff came in, three years ago, brand new coaching staff, the entire staff, and the head coach, Brad Biesco, he took in mostly his guys from, uh, he was from Holy Angels, and they had built a nice program there, small school, I think they're 4A, and they were very competitive and competing, and when he got the job, it was a bunch of younger guys, you know, I think the guys are mostly in their 20s and 30s, and they kept a few coaches that were um, still rising up in the system. What I mean that is they were going to coach another 15, 20 years, and they kind of settled in. But for the most part, it's his staff. And it only took about a one-and-a-half-year window from them, you know, to take a sub-500 team and make them a post or a above-500 team and right away get to 6-2, and 7-1, and 6-2 and and type seasons. And that's a coaching staff. And that's a community, and that's a good athletic director. And if you have that, you're going to be good for a long time. It, it's it's not fluky. Um, yeah, one time in a while, you'll have a class that's just special. You know, <laughs> the class will come through, and you just know that you know as their eighth graders and ninth graders and tenth graders are just dominating, and they have a lot of talent, and they have usually large numbers, and you know programs like Minnetonka, Eden Prairie back in the day, Blaine. You know, Maple Grove, the last 10 years, they're, they're competing for state titles every year because of their coaching staffs. And unless they have a huge coaching state change, uh, generally they stay that way. Um, coaching's everything in high school football. What I mean by that is not, they don't play the game, okay? But they do the X's and O's. They have a good system. And when I say a good system, that means they hold accountability. They treat the kids right. They probably work harder 
discipline some staffs. I don't want you to insult any staffs or anything like that because I know how hard it is in high school football. A lot of time, 90% of those guys, it's not a full-time job. It's, you know, something you do 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week, but you do it on the side. You know, you're probably a teacher or you have a full-time job, and then you make almost every waking moment outside of that. <laughs> you are studying film, you are prepping, and you are at practice. Um, it's a six to seven day a week job nowadays. Uh, when I first got into it, you know, it was a 20 to 25 hour week, you know. And now with things like Huddle, if you're familiar with Huddle, it's an online system where you can put all your playbook, your plays on there, your video on there, which is an amazing technology. It's collegiate level stuff. And the kids and the coaches can use this and utilize it to study it and use it on their phones, on their laptops at home. They can use it wherever they choose. They don't have to go to school like we did when we were young and have to watch old-fashioned film. And when I say film, I'm talking like a film strip. And if it snapped or cracked, the coach had to tape it and fix it. It was just <laughs> archaic. Um, and you had to do what you had to do, but film was certainly not as prevalent at the high school level then as it is now. It is absolutely mandatory. And if you use it properly... As a uh, coach, a high school football coach or an assistant football coach or a position coach, you are using that and probably spending 50, 60 hours a week in football, if you will, either be it practice or studying film and using film. So it, it just becomes a little bit consuming. Um, is it good for the kids and good for the, I don't know. I mean, I don't know that these coaches making, you know, between three and $8,000 a year really are getting compensated for, you know, working 50, 60 hour weeks. And they do it because they love it. You know that. That's a given. And that's why I did it. But at the same time, it becomes consuming. You know, the for nearly 20 years, I didn't wake up on a Saturday between, oh, we would probably say August 10th and November 1st, you know, without being at a high school at 6 in the morning, 7 in the morning, um, ready for film, practice, JV, whatever you got to do, you know. Um, sometimes you're helping out with the youth programs because they need help uh, as far as coaching and roughing. You're usually always doing something is my point. Um, and then, yes, you know, usually Sunday nights you got uh, you got some sort of coaches' meetings. Um, a lot of them can be on Skype or they can be, you know, um, you, can, you can utilize online so you don't have to actually meet at the school or wherever. Um, and it can be a little bit more efficient that way. And maybe it only takes an hour then. But again, it's another day. It's a seven-day week, 50-hour week now. So thank your high school football coaches out there, if they're family members, friends, your community. Um, they are not being compensated for what they do. They do it because they love it. They don't do it for money. I promise you that. But it doesn't hurt to thank them. They, they do a fantastic job. High school football in Minnesota has grown Thanks to people like Randy Shaver, you know Randy Shaver from CARE 11, he's promoted high school football tires license for 30 years, um, and it's been fantastic. He has unfortunately gotten older and battled a couple of cancer um, bouts, and he's beat them both so far, which is amazing. God bless that guy. Um, he's a saint. He's a superstar in the community for high school sports. And high school sports are better off because of men like him. Um, I think that we haven't found that next guy or next system to continue on what Randy brought as a legacy. They're trying, but, you know, it's online stuff. It's on YouTube TV. It's not on CARE 11 on Friday night, which I think really helps. You know, people our age, we still like to watch, you know, local television. We still like to watch cable and you put us online, it's not that we don't, but we don't like streaming because it's glitchy. You know, we just don't trust the internet. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I hope that at some point maybe they can transist back and maybe that would help. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe streaming is the right way to go because kids can use it right there and they're, you know, they can, they can be on the bathroom. They can be in the bathroom taking a, you know what, and they can sit and watch, you know, CARE 11 uh, right online or YouTube TV right online. They can use um, that system and they can figure out that stuff pretty quick. They're very techy, but I think you're 40 and up crowd. I don't know. I might've lost them at this point. <laughs> they start to lose their interest in searching for programs. You know, they just get tired. Of, like, oh, I can't find it. I'm done. And I think that's kind of part of the problem and that might hurt a little bit, but get out there, watch those games. And most of you do because you have 
you know, if kids in the program, family members in the program, you were in the program, um, maybe your dad or your brother is in the programs, your sisters, whoever it is, you know, they're in the programs and that makes it more fun. But, you know, when your kid graduates, don't be afraid to go back to that school, catch an occasional game, maybe take your kid or whatnot, um, because, or go with friends. It's still a great enjoyment. You'll remember it. It'll bring you back to those wonderful days when your kid was at school and those fun Friday nights, you know, there's nothing like it. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, get out there and watch a game. Thanks.